So Bitcoin was developed in 2009 by an unknown person or persons called Satoshi Nakamoto. And it's the first cryptocurrency in that people are willing to trade these units for money. And it's largely a very liquid traded asset. There's billions of dollars per day flowing through it. And it's anonymous to an extent, and people can use it as a form of digital currency because it's limited in supply. There's only 21 million units out there. And so it's well suited to being a better type of money and a digital currency for the world. Now, there are other cryptocurrencies that are emerging and are becoming popular, but Bitcoin has always been the biggest. And right now, it's priced at about $2,500 a Bitcoin. And so a year ago, Bitcoins were trading at 400 bucks. Now, does that mean it'll go to 25000 Not in the next year or two, but I can see it getting there one day. Um, and I think that it's a very interesting way of storing money and storing wealth. It is volatile, prices do rise, they do crash. But over the long term, I think we've all begun to believe that Bitcoin is something special and it will continue to grow. So because Bitcoin is a, a fixed supply, I call it digital commodity, and there's only 21 million units, the demand for it, is, you know, effectively eats into the supply. And there's only 12 and a half Bitcoins coming out of the system through a network, a process called mining uh, every 10 minutes. So there is going to be a long-term shortage. I mean, if every single person in the world wants to own one Bitcoin, well, there's only 21 million Bitcoins. So we don't have enough to go around. And it's not like a government. We can't print more Bitcoins um, you know, like governments print more money. So I think over time, people are realizing that because this asset has a shortage long-term, uh, the price rises. Now, in the short term, the price can spike you know, beyond the, beyond the short-term supply-demand constraints. But in the long term, I think the equilibrium point gets reached where Bitcoin is seen as an alternative type of money or, in fact, a digital gold. So th there, is, there are two camps, right, in Bitcoin. And there are people who believe that Bitcoin will disrupt the entire fintech e ecosystem and replace banks and replace all the infrastructure. I don't believe that's exactly correct. I think there may be some truth to that in some areas, but my belief is that Bitcoin offers a disruptive force for new entrants into the market. So companies which adopt Bitcoin as part of their strategy to enter fintech will become more competitive from an operational perspective because Bitcoin really allows you to do away with having to trust people to verify transactions and allowing machines and computers to do it. So in doing so, you could have a bank which currently has 20% admin staff reduced to 5% or 3%. Makes them a lot more efficient, makes the fees lower, and it makes them more competitive in the market. Now that company may disrupt the other banks because they're bloated, too many people, um, too much cost, too much overhead. And so that's where I think blockchain and Bitcoin comes in. Can we use these technologies to build smarter, leaner, more efficient companies versus seeing it as disrupting the ecosystem in and of itself? I think there are regulations and good need reasons to have banks, but they don't have to be charging what they charge today. And so competition to the banking sector and the fintech sector is important. I think Bitcoin and blockchain will offer that.